years, even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webwear, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices, and I'm actually on most of the really early on tutorials, okay? In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. As you can see, I went ahead and took the liberty of opening my own studio designer account. Um, it is using my Instagram name. I didn't really want to use any real info, but the first thing that you want to do when setting up your studio is to provide the company details. You're going to use as much information as you possibly can. I am going to go ahead and put my phone number in since um, it's that's not really a secret. And I will go ahead and put my website in as well. Okay, we're gonna dive right into tax location. Okay, this obviously pertains to sales tax. Sales tax is a topic that I can discuss and probably have discussed for many hours, okay, which we will dive into that specific topic a little later. This is specifically to show you how to set up the tax location. This is the default one, but any additional tax locations that you you may want to set up are going to still follow these same simple rules they're just not going to be set up in this area okay this is the tax location that is defaulted for your business so for me in this example i should be doing nevada uh, las vegas nevada because that is where i'm located and the first thing that i usually tell everybody to do is google right um in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do Nevada sales tax, um, okay? You're gonna find different things come up and oddly, Avalara comes up before the actual state and that is the case in most states, okay? So make sure that you're doing the one for your state. It's usually gonna be a gov that would indicate uh, that is a, it is a government agency, or at least we hope it is. And um, I'm gonna just go ahead and pull up this is what it looks like when you click uh, this Nevada Tax Center. Okay, it takes you here. And I did take the liberty of, you know, taking a quick peek. And you can usually find this in FAQ or um, in other areas, depending on the state's search button. In this case, I wanted to find out, is our design services taxable, right? And here you can see that they are breaking it out that it is going to be taxable. The only thing, the only service or consulting that would not be taxable would be the installation and repair, okay? So you need to pay attention to these. Um, if they had a service booklet, I usually would download it and give it to the designer or keep it in the file. Okay, so I was able to locate the sales tax rate on the website as you usually always can, okay? And it is 8.375. So I usually will screenshot this or save it. I make sure that the uh, website uh, information is listed. I think that's important to always retain as well because you can literally pull this up from anywhere. So I wanna create my sales tax location for 8375%. Okay, so I'm gonna add a new, and I'm gonna go up here and click new. And I am going to go ahead and put, I always put the sales tax rate in. I think that's important because um, at a quick glance, it kind of lets anybody 
wanting to look at your books uh, know what rate we're charging. And it also lets me know right away if I think the sales tax rate is wrong for some reason. Um, it's just easy to have. Okay, I teach it that way and um, I, I document everything and I recommend everyone do the same. Okay, um, there is room for human error, but I like to have backup on everything. So in through here, what these tax rules are, because, you know, different states have so many different weird things going on, depending on how they do it. Um, so those rules would be used in the case of Las Vegas. I am not going to do any rule. And in through here, we're going to just put the sales tax rate. Okay, and I don't have to do anything to these others. Um, I, I would want to put the the same dollar amount or same uh, percentage in through here as well, unless you are in a state with a different uh, time or labor uh, ta sales tax rate. Okay, um, off the top of my head, I can only think of uh, maybe New York or New Jersey that have that. Okay. So be mindful of that. Um, and in through here, selling is going to be taxable. You're going to say yes. Markup is also going to be taxable, and which is also important, you guys, because if you get somebody who's a client and they're a stickler like me, and I caught that, I would probably try to calculate what your markup was. Okay, so it, it, that that's why I do that. Okay, you always want to do that. And in this case, I'm going to say that time is taxable. Now, when we get through uh the the actual gl accounts and that's what these are these are the default gl accounts that are uh set to default now this is fine if you want to use it like this i would use it like this i would only change it in the event that i had more tax locations or i was operating in multiple states okay and i'll show you what that looks like a little later um, i will do a sales tax segment as well Okay, so this looks good. I am going to go ahead and save it. Okay, the room list, I don't have it default because I encourage everybody to set up a new room list with every client. Now, if it's a one-off thing, um, it's your choice if you don't wanna set up a new room list, but I like to, it's, it's, it's great. And we'll kind of dive into that as well, okay? These are defaults. Uh, for these types of things. Now you can always open them. You can see I don't set any of these defaults up because that's kind of something that's on a per item basis, right? We don't usually know. If your terms are um, not listed here, we can set them up. But in the case of, of this, I am going to just leave it alone because I, I usually like it to be on receipt, okay? And what this copy purchase default means i always say always okay the what that does is it basically copies the purchase price onto the selling side so you don't have to or you don't have to worry about uh data entry errors and things like that for me i will always make it copy and we'll dive into that a little bit later as well and specify only we're going to leave it no it's important that we leave it at no because for those of you that aren't aware specify only is a feature that is available in the event that your client does not does not uh, pay you for the goods maybe they're paying you the design fee and they're paying the vendor directly something like that that usually is when you would use a specify only and we will do a separate video for that as well okay um, this area is for uh, the currency, if you are using a currency that is not listed, um, you can set one up. I do know the majority of uh, currency should be in. Um, I have dealt with people all over the world, not just the U.S., uh, for studio, okay? So the date format, you can change it. I like it in this format. Um, I'm going to leave all that alone. Now, these GL accounts are... Uh, something that you can make default as well. I am not going to do that in this case just yet. Okay, so that is really what you have to set up in this area. Okay, I am going to even um, screenshot this so that you can have uh, 
what that screenshot looks like, okay? Okay, so after you've gone into settings, my company, and have set up your information uh, for your company, I recommend and encourage for you to always go to codes. Okay, this is something you're gonna hear me repeat. I do repeat things uh, because I don't know what sections of the videos will be cut and I want to reiterate, okay? It's something I do when I'm teaching uh, bookkeepers and accountants how to use Studio. These defaults that you set up here are so important because these are the company-wide defaults, okay? Anything that you set up here is is basically established as the company-wide settings. And from there, uh, you would be setting up things under the client level and vendor level, which we'll get into later, and why it's so important to have these defaults, okay? Because they, they do kind of fall, follow suit. So, okay, to wrap up this code section setup, I do want to bring you down down the screen some I, I said you know we kind of leave everything up here right I'm, I'm, I am I'm not going to set up these GL account defaults for paying accounts right here in through here I don't know if you can see but in through here I'm going to leave that for now we will double back on it and uh, set up additional defaults when we're ready to do so but at this time because we have not set up our GL accounts or reviewed them I'm going to leave them alone okay and uh, not sure if you can see, but uh, if you look, you can see the, the sections or fields that are mandatory, okay? And that must be filled out. A lot of these are blank, so they're not mandatory, okay? So I just kind of look through here. This I will explain a little later. Um, these are ways to change how we uh, process things. So in this case, you can see that there's like order side mark, order code, you know, you can change it depending on how you want to see that. Um, I kind of leave it with this uh, default setting, okay? Um, in through here, you're gonna see that this is a, a consignment button, commit inventory to client on proposal. Um, I will dive into that when we get into the inventory section, but for now, I am gonna go ahead and leave these uh, defaults, okay? This check forms, section here is going to take a little bit of playing with and I'll explain that in um, another section but you are going to want to look at your check format to determine what exactly this is going to be for you it's they're not named very well so uh, you know depending on what yours looks like I kind of have a template list so um, that is something that you're going to have to play with I can um, answer any questions you may have on that and on this numbering, you will find that your studio is gonna default. The proposals are usually gonna always number, num be numbered in the ones with, with a one starting. The POs are gonna start with the two and the invoice will start with the three. Now, can you change these to something else? You absolutely can, but um, most people that use studio often are gonna notice that uh, you do kind of like seeing these numbers because it's very easily um, identifiable when I'm looking at things, um, whether it's an order, invoice, or proposal, okay? And we'll, we'll dive into that some more, okay? If you uh, are going to use the system to print checks, like I said, you're gonna want to know your check form and uh, I will explain a process in which to do that. So we would usually start on the last check number that you printed. I am going to leave it at zero because I haven't printed any checks, okay? This deposits section is uh, this undeposited funds. For those of you that are very uh, accounting savvy or have used QuickBooks in the past, this is something that you, you know, may be used to. For most people or for new companies, I do not use it. Okay, it's, it's one more account to reconcile and it usually just throws people off. But I will have a video specifically for using undeposited funds, okay? Some people like to use it. Um, I have no preference, but if you're not a strong accountant or a bookkeeper, I, I just don't recommend it, okay? If a designer is choosing to do the their books 
in the beginning, which I'm all for. I think it, it's nice for, uh, for designers to be able to kind of know how to maneuver around within their account. And I also think it's, it's nice to kind of have that practice and know what to do in the very beginning. And it gives you a different appreciation for what uh, people on my end kind of do. Okay, uh, now we're wrapping up in the last section of the codes setup, okay, in your company-wide setup. Here, it's asking me what my selling markup is, okay? This is company-wide. You can uh, make it different using specific vendors, and we'll get into that a little bit later, but my company-wide uh, selling markup would be 35%. Okay, that's a good place to start. I, I personally think it's a little low, but it's a good place to start. If your selling markup is lower than that, um, review your profitability reports, okay? If you have questions on that, uh, message me. So in this section, we are putting in the amount that we want. So it's, you see it's selling deposit. It's the amount that we want uh, to be paid on our proposals. I like it at 100%. I expect the clients to pay 100% on proposal acceptance, okay? And you're gonna want to make sure that the percentage um, you're requesting is the same throughout this section, okay? Because we're talking about deposits. Now, I always make everything default and in through here, when you get to purchase deposit, this is the default of what we would pay our vendor. I also like to assume it's 100%. Now, if I have a, a fabricator or somebody that only requires 50%, I will set up that 50% change on the vendor side. Okay, we'll get into that a little bit later.